Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I'm unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. Today is a new and old day. I had been reminiscing recently about the first fountain pen I had used and owned. It was when I was in junior high and 13 years old. I'd probably seen one of my classmates using one of these dollar student pens from Schaefer and took my allowance and went to the Grand and Toy Stationers at my local mall and picked up a Schaefer student pen with a shiny chrome cap and a light blue plastic barrel. It came with a pack of six cartridges, Schaefer washable blue. I have no idea what happened to that pen, but I know that I used it for years through high school and especially loved Schaefer peacock blue cartridges that were harder to get. The fountain pen fell out of favor as I started my career in theater design, choosing to use tools from the drafting trade, uh, mechanical pencils, technical pens, and even ruling pens instead of a fountain pen. So I recently did an eBay search for a Schaefer student pen and finally found one that wasn't exactly like the original, it isn't blue, but close enough. It is a Schaefer student pen from the 1970s. It is identical to the pen I owned other than the color of the barrel. I was a bit surprised at the price of this pen at $15 US with $20 US shipping. But when you consider my original Schaefer from 1969 was about a buck 50, then that pen would be around $12 today. And given that this pen is in excellent working condition 52 years later, the price of the pen isn't that unreasonable. However, the $20 US shipping is a bit steep considering how it was packaged as you'll see in a moment. I thought it might be interesting to compare this 50 year old pen to a modern Schaefer student pen, the Schaefer Pop from Staples for $20 Canadian. And let's see how the new and old compare right now. <music> Well, you may have heard of a NPD, which is a new pen day, or an NID, which is a new ink day, but this is an NOPD, which is a new old pen day. And let's open this package up and see. There's nothing in it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> wow, very interesting packaging. Big box, small, small pen. So this, <laughs> this is nostalgia for me. Uh, this is a 1970s Schaefer student pen. And when Joost Applebaum asked me to do a video on my top three pens, it got me reminiscing to myself about uh, where I began with fountain pens and the first fountain pen that I ever owned, which is probably in grade five or six. And it was one of these. Mine was blue, like this one, uh, but this one's black. They came in a blister pack uh, with um, ink cartridges from Schaefer. And it's funny now that I hold it in my hands some, oh, 20 years later. <laughs> okay, 30, well, a little bit more than 30. Uh, it's so small. Uh, do you remember when you, the first time you went back to your public school or your high school when you were uh, grown up and you went back and saw your either public or high school for the first time in years and years and years? You went, oh my God, the lockers are small. The, the water fountains are close to the ground. Everything's so small. Well, that's how I feel about this pen. Let's put it up against my Leonardo Memento Zero and you can get an idea of just how small that pen is. Boy, in my mind, it's a lot bigger. But uh, this is a real moment of nostalgia for me. Wow, no wonder it's a student pen. Posted, it's plenty long enough. It's actually very comfortable. Well, I'll have to clean this out and give it a try. This is a vintage pen. Oh, it comes with an empty cartridge. Yeah, boy, oh boy, that takes me back. 
And so to compare this pen uh, with a modern equivalent, I went out and bought a Schaefer Pop. It's a brand new pen and it was about $20. And I'm going to open it up right now as well. Who knew you'd get stuff? Use and care guide. Well, isn't that nice? And we'll pop the pop out of the blister pack. And there's the pen. I'd say they were much different. But uh, that's kind of a trend, I think, isn't it? In fountain pens, fountain pens of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s even, were very slim. And the modern fountain pens and pens are much thicker. This has a rubberized grip, which is actually very nice. And it is a cartridge converter, of course. And it has a cartridge with it. Uh, Schaefer Black, but I've got a five pack of Classic Blue, which I think I will use in both pens because Schaefer has not changed their cartridge configuration in decades and decades. Let's see how it posts. Ah, it snaps onto the back of that. Makes it very long, almost too long, but it is a positive snap on the end. So it's there securely. Good. Well, I'll clean out both pens and put them through their paces and we shall do a review. Exciting nostalgia. So what I'd like to do today is compare and contrast these two pens. I'll go over their parts and features, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide some writing samples. After the writing samples, please stay tuned as I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about these pens. I think I displayed my surprise at the size of this pen when I took it out of the box and compared it to going back to your public school and being stunned by the small size of the lockers and the water fountains. It makes sense that a pen that I held in my much smaller hand when I was 12 feels so small in my adult hands 50 years later. But I'm fascinated by the experience. It's such a shock to the senses, isn't it? It's uh, one of those disorienting experiences where the laws of physics don't seem to hold true, or perhaps it's just a faint echo recurrence from that acid trip in the 1970s. Speaking of drugs of a sociable nature and mind-bending size differentials, I remember watching Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind in a movie theater for the first time in 1977. Everyone was talking about the incredible light show effects at the end of the movie, and the thing to do in 1977 was to get high before the film, to really appreciate the film properly. So my girlfriend at the time and I smoked a little ganja and went to see the film. The drugs effects wore off long before the effects show at the end of the film. But while we were waiting for the film to start, we were baked, of course, and I hadn't had a pack of rosebud chocolates in years. And of course, I was craving them. Rosebud. So I picked up some at the snack bar and settled into my seat. When I opened the box and poured some into my hand, I screamed and jumped up, scattering them all over. What had shocked me was that they were the size of chippets in my hand compared to the big rosebuds I had remembered as a kid. And the added effect of the THC on my brain was that my hand had grown three times its normal size. Holy crap! <laughs> Please help me! Even silver, it's remarkable how small this pen still feels to me. It feels like a three-quarter size fountain pen. So let's look at this vintage pen first. From the top, it has a conical finial in the chrome cap. And then we have a very short clip with Schaefer stamped onto it. And it's very stiff. I can't even really budget. I can't trust my memory that this isn't exactly how long the clip was in my original. Uh, but it seems very short and very stiff right now. Can you make that straighter? That's what she said. The cap tapers up and then is straight to the end. 
and it has these really nice lines stamped into the metal that give it a nice textured look. There is virtually no step transition from the cap to the plastic barrel, which is a long, very shallow, almost imperceptible taper to the pointed conical end finial. And at the top of the barrel, there is a heat stamp with Schaefer that says Schaefer made in the USA 1D. There's the 1D. Schaefer started stamping the name into the barrels of their pens back in the late 30s, along with the code which represented the price, which is as odd as this writing being upside down if you consider the cap at the top of the pen. So I assume this 1D stands for one dollar. I'd buy that for a dollar. The cap slips off with the same silky smoothness of a genuine Parker 51 or my Pilot E95S. Very silky, silky smooth. And this feels just as silky. And it reveals a small tapering black plastic section with a flare at the end and a uniquely sized Schaefer steel nib and black plastic feed. The nib is a number six size since the feed measures 6.3 millimeters at the width of the base. But compared to a standard number six size nib like this Yovo that's in my Leonardo Ferrari, uh, it is very small indeed. It doesn't go out as wide. It certainly is wide at the bottom, but isn't as long and as broad. Let's look at the nib a little closer. The steel nib has two arches that curve from the breather hole to the shoulders and is reminiscent of early Schaefer nib designs on the, I think it's the Imperial. I might be wrong. Then it has Schaefer, an M for medium, and made in the USA. And the plastic feed is unique as well, being very chunky and prominent. The section has a silver clutch ring at the bottom, and this is what gives the cap that silky capping and uncapping ability. But when we unscrew the section, what we see is it's actually top of the barrel. And here is the vintage Schaefer washable blue cartridge that came with the pen. I showed you the modern Schaefer cartridges that I bought with the Schaefer pop, and I was gonna use them with this vintage pen as well. But they are slightly too big in that they get stuck in this barrel they go in all right but when you unscrew the section the barrel pulls the the cartridge out of the pen it might require just a little bit of shaving of the ends of these uh, uh, modern cartridges to make them fit into the vintage barrel but at this point i'm syringe filling the uh, washable blue into the uh, vintage uh, converter. I don't know if this nib will come out as I'm not interested in even trying with this 50 year old pen, but I suspect the nib and feed are not removable. The inside of the cap shows a plastic cap liner. The cap posts deeply and securely, which is important because the pen is too short to write with unposted. Um, posted, it is a decent length and well balanced. Let's compare this pen with my Pilot 195 unposted. You can see the Schaefer is almost as short as the E95 unposted, and they're very similar in length with the Schaefer being shorter and much thinner when it's posted. Now let's turn our attention to the modern Schaefer student pen, the Pop. It is very different. It is much wider than the vintage Schaefer by a full four millimeters. And the pen is a straight barrel shape from finial to finial with a much longer clip. From the top, we see a tapered chrome ring finial with a plastic dot in the center that has chafer stamped into it twice. The chrome finial ring is actually part of the clip, uh, which has a nice slit in it in the middle, similar to the Waterman design. And a classic Schaefer white dot, which means a Schaefer lifetime warranty. It said so on the pamphlet. The clip is nicely springy and usable. The black plastic cap is straight along its length 
to the barrel which is separated from the cap by a small black plastic ring the barrel is straight again along its entire length uh, to the end finial which is a stepped chrome metal ring with a blue plastic dot in the center this end finial is shaped like this to accommodate the posting of the cap the cap snaps off to reveal a black plastic tapering section that is coated in a soft black rubber grip the end of the section has a bump uh, which is the snap cap mechanism and a taper towards another unique Schaefer steel nib this nib is big and short it is wide enough at the base to be classified as the number six but even shorter than the vintage Schaefer a closer look shows the arches have been replaced by a horizontal line then it says a Schaefer and then a curved arch under the Schaefer and an M for medium and the black plastic feed is short and thick I have to comment on the edges of the cap and the barrel it looks like the plastic for the pen was a long tube that was cut for the separation between the cap and barrel that leaves the edges of the cap and the barrel raw unfinished and sharp you can feel this when you run your fingers up and down this pen when it's capped and you can see that sharp edge right there on the cap there is no cap liner in this pen that I can see and the cap snaps on to the end of the pen to post which makes the pen very long and a bit back weighted this isn't a huge issue as this pen is so light now let's look at some size comparisons and here we are with the vintage Schaefer student pen with a Schaefer VFM a Pilot Metropolitan the Schaefer Pop and a Lamy Safari now let's look at them posted and here they are posted and you can see that the uh, vintage Schaefer student is the shortest of the group posted uh, but not out of line with the VFM and the Metropolitan and the Schaefer Pop and the Lamy Safari are almost the same length now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample and we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the vintage 1970s Schaefer student and it has a medium steel nib let's check the wetness this pen is plenty wet the nib is smooth with a good deal of feedback not scratchy smooth but very wet and the ink today is Schaefer washable blue as to line variation well I'm not going to attempt to push this as this is a vintage steel nib that is rather short and stiff there is no bounce to this nib at all very stiff according to my Richard Binder chart this line is 0.5 millimeters or Western fine or a Japanese fine to medium and I am pronouncing Richard Binder correctly I used to say Binder and then I changed it to binder when people started correcting me but I've recently watched a television documentary where Richard Binder calls himself Binder so I'll take it from there yeah. Yeah. and for our quote and for some reverse writing 
Well, it doesn't want to do reverse at all. It's cutting into the paper. And some quick writing. No issues whatsoever. Now let's look at the 2021 Schaefer Pop. And it has a medium steel nib. Let's check the wetness. It's very wet as well. No problems with flow. But this pen had a slight misalignment and although it's okay in this direction and this direction with a good amount of feedback, in this direction and up it actually digs in the paper. It's so scratchy. Um, I correct the misalignment but it is still fairly scratchy. A little micro mesh will help out with that nib. But the pen is thick and wet and writes right out of the box. This is a Chinese steel nib and there is no line variation to be had. This line according to my Richard Binder chart is 0.6 millimeters, slightly thicker than the vintage Schaefer and that comes out as a Western medium or a Japanese medium too fine. Sorry, medium too broad. And for another quote, Now that I pull that cap off, I know why they called it the Schaefer Pop. Give that to your students and you'd hear that all day long in class. So what do I like and what do I not like about these fountain pens? Well, let's start with the vintage Schaefer student pen. I love everything about this pen and I hate everything about this pen. How's that for fair and balanced? First, let me say that the cost of this pen was worth the experience. I probably won't ever write with this pen again, but I'll keep it in my collection as memorabilia. So pardon me for digressing here, and you can skip ahead using the chapters if you like. Uh, but I want to relate to you a similar experience, not with a fountain pen, but with a guitar. Around the time I got my first Schaefer student pen, I got my first guitar. Here I am with my guitar in around 1970. The guitar is a 1960 Hofner 172 Stratocaster clone with a black neck and a body covered in white Naga hide. I can't imagine how many Nagas died for this finish on this guitar. I learned to play guitar on this instrument. In my 20s, I sold the guitar to a university buddy of mine for $10. Decades later, when I was beginning to collect guitars, I contacted my buddy as I wanted to buy the guitar back from him at a reasonable price, like a couple hundred dollars. These are rare guitars. He refused as he was using the guitar and loved it. So I went on a hunt on eBay for one like it. I found one very close to mine on eBay, but it was in rough condition. The Naga hide had peeled and the pickups didn't work. I bought it anyway. I spent a month restoring the guitar. I recut the nut, that's the part of the guitar on the neck that the strings go through, mended the Naga hide and had to invent a system for rewinding the pickups from scratch. I fixed the pickup bobbin to the wheel of an old sewing machine, hooked up a cheap mouse to a switch, which basically gave me a mouse click with every rotation of the sewing machine, and registered that mouse click on a counter on my laptop so I could get the right number of turns. It was a labor of love to restore a guitar similar to the one I had when I was 14. The guitar turned out pretty nice and played very nicely. But I had a brand new Fender Stratocaster and never played the Hofner because, well, it was inferior to the real thing. So I sold the Hofner. This student pen is the same. 
It's worth the effort and expense to relive the vintage experience and the nostalgia of my first fountain pen. But I'm a different person. My tastes have changed. My hands are bigger. And I have much better tools with which to write than this 50-year-old dollar pen. But what about the Schaefer Pop? Well, overall, for $20, it's a decent pen. It's nicely thick. It feels good in the hand. And most of all, it writes. The nib will require a bit of tuning to make it totally scratch-free because even though the tines were slightly misaligned, even when aligned properly, it's still a bit scratchy. But I must say it's head and shoulders over this Schaefer VFM, which is supposed to stand for uh, value for money, I think. But I think it should stand for very fouled up model. Fubar. Y'all got that right. Yeah, look at the food bar in the German dictionary. There's no food bar in there. Pop on. Yes, sir. Quite a situation, huh? Beyond all recognition, right? Yeah, right. Food bar. Oh. <laughs> and I'm being PG here one of the worst pens I've ever experienced. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.